Welcome, everyone. This is the Jenkins Platform SIG meeting, March 26, 2024. Around the table today, we have Mark Waite and Kevin Martin. Hello, folks. On the agenda today, uh, quite a packed up agenda. We have the usual suspect, the open action item, Java 21 uh, support, 2 plus 2 plus 2 plan, and so on. The released work of the agent and controller image, the work in progress on images, and a few words about Docker based quick start tutorials and exotic architectures. Mark, Kevin, is there anything else you'd like to add to the agenda? Uh, nothing. Well, so you've got it. You've got the topics I want to discuss. Oh, cool! <laughs> Thank you, Mark. <laughs> so let's get started with open action items. As always, we still have to find new ways to announce the Blue Ocean Docker container um, is not updated anymore. So, yeah, it's deprecated. But it's low priority. We don't see that many messages uh, asking for updates on the various um, media channels. So that's okay. I think people tend to get it or um, are accepting the fact that it's not updated right now. Now onto the Java 21 support, the 2 plus 2 plus 2 Java support plan. I haven't seen um, new things in the discussion, Mark, but that doesn't mean it's not progressing in any yeah. way, right? So Basil and I were just, just discussing uh, a day or two ago uh, before the weekend, and uh, we've we've got more implementations that have happened. We yeah. have some more work that needs to be done. And uh, yeah, it's still got more to do. We may ultimately take Basil up on his suggestion. I may ultimately take him up on a suggestion he had offered when I started the thing to that he would create a, a, a counter to it, a a competing proposal that I could close my pull oh. request and use his because he's done he's done the vast majority of the technical work has been by him not by me and so and that's that's okay I'm I've still got to discuss with him because I don't know that I'm going to have enough time to do all the other things yet so it, it, uh, he and I'll discuss it further Thank you, Mark. Uh, by the way, by, by reading earlier today your proposal, I discovered another dedicated vendor for Solaris or Solaris compatible. Um, yeah, that, that's something I didn't know of uh, before today. That's pretty cool that Star Solaris is still alive uh, and kicking. Interesting. Anyway. Yeah, so who's the vendor? Oh, I'm not so sure it's a commercial vendor. I think it's an open source initiative. Okay, maybe I totally misunderstood what I read. What no, was no, it about? no, that's that's cool. I'm just glad to hear it as well. So Peter Tribble is still ah, maintaining yes. a Neil Moss yes, Solaris and, open dedicated port. And so that that work is somewhat akin to the same work that is done in the FreeBSD project where they where they they provide OpenJDK 21 as part of FreeBSD also. And FreeBSD has it now also. So it's it's been positive. It's just, that's not a particular vendor. That's just a port that oh. they make available in Oops. Illumos. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Good. so uh, the Jenkins infra or community does nothing for that. It just happens to be there. Correct. Yeah. We, okay, so, so for we open do not JDK, support it. We, we, don't, we don't test it. We don't know. Nobody that I know of is an Illumos user in the in the Jenkins community at all. Okay, got it. Um, next subject, is, once again, it's for you, Mark, <laughs> because the Spring Project made an announcement a few weeks ago about the last public build of the Spring Security Framework 5.x next August and about the Spring Framework 5.3.x, which is also August 2024. And we are not supposed at Jenkins to move to JDK 17 before October, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So there would be some kind of a gap between August and October if ever something terrible would happen security-wise within spring. Am I right? Correct. Yeah, so you've understood it. The alternatives are as listed there. That, And the most likely is that if something happens in spring 5.x between August 24 and the end of October when it's end of life, 
uh, we may have to patch it ourselves. That's yeah. uh, we've we've done that before with other things. So if we had to do it there, we could. Um, I haven't started a discussion yet on the mailing list. Basil and I have been discussing it face to face, you know, to to each other, and we'll continue that discussion. There's more to do, and I will start the discussion publicly. Uh, in addition to here, because it's. Yeah. It, it, we need we need more uh, planning and more more effort on this. It looks like it's going to be a large effort. Yeah, fingers crossed. We'll see. Thanks a lot, Mark. Mm -hmm. Now on to the release work on agent and controller images, which means releases. So uh, Damien told us earlier that we were still having some errors, uh, problems, issues with Docker Hub that keeps sending HTTP code. 429 errors uh, for whatever reason. I think we don't know yet if it's linked to um, a modification in our account or modification in the Docker uh, terms of use or something else, but it's still happening. So the Windows image for the latest weekly are not up yet, but the Linux images are okay as far as I know. And I've checked the Linux images and they are definitely okay. Cool. Good to know. Uh, so, of course, we got since last two weeks two uh, controller weekly, the 450 and the 451, which, of course, upgraded to latest uh, Jenkins weekly versions. But we also moved to a newer version of the Bookworm Linux. And we removed the convert from JSON issue by simplifying tag management. That's just for Windows images, if I'm not mistaken. It's linked to a more recent version of PowerShell, uh, if I understood it correctly. Anyway, mm -hmm. that doesn't change anything for the end users. Uh, we also had an LTS uh, for the Docker image. By the way, I watched the video you made with um, Darren Pop lately, Mark, and it was great uh, and interesting, really. Thank you for that. So what happened within this uh, image? We removed the JDK 20, uh, 19 from the update CLI script. Uh, I think you did that, Mark. Thanks for that. And it doesn't change much for the end user. It's just we're not building any more JDK um, 19. We also moved the Debian bookmore, Bookworm to a newer version and UB9 to the latest version. So nothing groundbreaking for the end users. For the Docker agent, hmm, we had quite a few changes and a few version bumps. And so we got three new releases. So um, it has been quite a few weeks or months since we had a JDK uh, bump version for the Docker agent. That's because of a, how would I call that? A bug, <laughs> limitation? Uh, something's changed within update CLI lately. And you now have to write down in the updates like manifest the complete architecture that you are targeting uh, in the conditions for example you we used to work uh, to write arm uh, 64 or amd 64 to check for the existence of arm 64 and amd 64 docker images and Linux was implied and in the recent version of update CLI that's not the case anymore you have to prefix uh, with Linux or with Windows, or even worse, for ARM32, you have to write Linux slash uh, ARM slash V7, I think. So uh, the manifests were not working anymore, and that's why we didn't have newer version of the GDK. That's solved, uh, mostly solved uh, <laughs> now, so that's why we now have some newer versions. So we also upgraded to a newer version of uh, Bookworm. And yes, we got back official, not, not back because that was never the case. We now have official Timurin build for Linux uh, S390X for JDK21. Because up to a few weeks ago, we had only uh, preview versions of Timurin uh, JDK for S390X. And uh, now that it's widely available, we can use um, official version for the S390X. That's pretty cool because that also allowed the infrastructure team to have official um, JDK21 images for our S319X. Uh, agent machines, if I'm not mistaken, they are from OSU, OSL Mark, right? No, actually, they're donated by oh. IBM. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Close, but that's okay. 
they're, they're, okay. it's a, a, an account that IBM lends us. But we do have some S319X uh, agents. Somewhere. We do. That is correct. I, IBM. Thank you, IBM. Mm -hmm. Now, for SSH agent, nothing really major. We had just two versions for Bookworm, Linux, and the Git version on Windows. Now, on to the work in progress for images. We still have the long running draft uh, adapted that GDK 11174 Windows. Um, it will work one of these days. Thank you, Ave, for the time you, you uh, took on that. And now for the Docker agent, three PRs are in review. The first one is an automatic one uh, fired by Update CLI about the newer version of the JDK 21, but that showed us it doesn't work. And that showed us that we still have some work to do um, on the way we are updating um, our Docker files and Docker bake. Uh, Mark, I think, yes, you were the, the one that uh, saying that we had to do something about that. And then we started on several other um, uh, PR that were supposed to solve um, the problem, but um, some of them are not yet <laughs> finished. And yeah, we'll see. Um, yes, one of them was just a proof of concept. Uh, I think it will never ever get merged, but that was just to show <laughs> that if ever uh, Temerin was not able to provide us with recent version of a JDK 21 build for ARM32, there are other vendors, at least one other vendor that could supply us with a recent version of the JDK 21, an official version. Um, but that's something that made me think of um, the way we are building our images today. Uh, most of the time we take an image from Temerim it itself. Uh, it used to be a focal image. Now it's a jammy image. And then we extract the JDK. We run the gelink uh, to have a, a customized or tailored version of the JDK. And then we take a Debian image and put that binaries into that Debian image. And we have, um, when we were experimenting with JDK 21, we had preview images and we did another way because uh, Terran was not supplying the um, um, Ubuntu based images. So we took the um, official preview uh, binaries for Linux and then copied them directly after a gelling step into the Debian image. We know that works. And we'll have to discuss with the rest of the community, but I'm not sure we should keep on using that Ubuntu image because it's sometime, uh, it appears sometimes later than the official binaries themselves. So whenever there is a CVE, we could be uh, faster to react when using directly the binaries instead of the images. But that's my point of view. Uh, you may not agree with that, and that's fine with me. I, th I think it's a worthwhile discussion. So. The question there is, do we build from container images? Do we use a, a from clause to bring in the container image? Or do we go after and download the exact binary? That the I was a little surprised that you haven't moved that one out of draft because ARM v7, as far as I understood it, they've Temerin has said they're not going to do it, or has has they have they actually changed their statement? No, there? What's... officially no. Uh, okay. In fact, it was in their uh, roadmap. It should have been there, but then they faced a problem with the uh, TCK. You know, the test of the suite, right? Test right. Of suite. Yeah, uh, it was not uh, working. But then we saw that it was working for Liberica, for example. So we know that Open JDK can work for ARM32, and. They would like, some of them, some of the people in the uh, Timurian community would like to get ARM32 JDK21 builds. But the thing is they have a limited amount of time as in every open source project. So they don't have the means to do it for the time being. But today I saw once again, uh, Stuart Addison, he would also like uh, ARM32 builds for JDK21. Um, asking if we, we, uh, you know, the Temun users would need the, a guy. So the Java FX and so on part of the JDK. So I don't know what that means, um, but maybe it's because they have a test failing in the um, UI part, maybe. So maybe we could have a reduced version of the JDK. 
I don't know. I'm still in touch with um, Stuart. So we'll see if anything good happens from that. So yes, it's still in draft because I'm not so sure I want to use Liberica for ARM v7. And frankly, I haven't heard a voice in the Jenkins community saying, I want an up-to-date JDK21 Docker image for ARM32. I even don't know if I'm not the only one using the site. Um, <laughs> Mark, have you heard anyone complaining? No, uh -uh, I have not. So we still, you know, uh, it's 2024. Five maybe when we'll have to move to JDK twenty one for Jenkins. Uh twenty twenty six, I think Six. it's every two years, right? We roll over every two years. So So we still have plenty of time. Right. Okay, and the last one is not really interesting. It's um uh, an attempt uh, to track the Ubuntu at Debian LTS releases. I thought that uh, that's what Damien wanted me to experiment with, but I think I misunderstood uh, what he wanted. So we can forget about this one, but uh, this also made me think of, do we still want to use that Ubuntu dependency or just use the binary releases? I think we'll have to discuss that more. Right. Now onto the Docker SSH agent. Uh, we have one PR that is a long running run, which is the bump of the Git LFS version of Windows. But there is a flaky test. Uh, so for the time being, it's blocking the migration to JDK 17 and 21 for Windows. So there are a bunch of things to do before being able to uh, update uh, that uh, version of Git LFS. Um, yeah. We also have the BUM JDK 21 version 2.21.02.13. I think you, Mark, uh, detected that there was a problem um, because now after the 3.71 on the 3.72, we can see that every time JDK 17 or JDK uh, 21 are updated, there is a flip-flop in the Docker file because the Docker the JDK version uh, flips from JDK 17 something to JDK 21 something. So I think that's an error I made in the recent PR. So we'll have to correct that. And the last one is uh, the one that we are using to uh, move the Linux S319X to an official version and not a preview version. The thing is, uh, the current version that is defined in the Docker files and in the Docker bake uh, does not exist for S390X. So we'll have to upgrade the version of the JDK, and then we will be able to move the S319X to a um, more recent version, an official version for a JDK 21. Well, okay, so that part, could you, I'm, oh. I need to be a little more clear on that one. So we're using 21.0.2 everywhere, as far as I know. Yes, for the time being. I, oh, I'm not sure I understand then. So, so. Yeah, the, the thing is we'd like to uh, move uh, S319X out of preview and into the standard one. And the thing is um, the current version, which is uh, 2102 something. Uh -huh. uh, what is it from? Uh, yeah. This is the one that yeah. shows the, the flip-flop. Yeah, yeah, you're right. My fault, I guess. So the 2101 underscore 12 does not exist for S319X. Right. So we'll Whereas 2102.13 does. Yes, indeed. Sorry, okay. I was not Got really it. clear. Okay. I mean, that's that's one where we could certainly do that. We could fix that problem interactively by by modifying that pull request to be acceptable so that then we yes. can get get the thing released. We, even if we don't fix update CL, even if we don't fix whatever's wrong with our use of update CLI, we yeah. can also wait a day. I think that Damien said he had thinks he knows the solution for it and is that's interested right. in doing it. So we can just wait a day. Yeah, uh, that's why I didn't start it, uh, start correcting it. Uh, I could have done uh, worse things, by the way, but Damien already knows what he wants to do with that. And he, right. uh, yeah, so it's, let it like that until Damien fixes it. Great. Thank you. Now on to the Docker base quick start tutorial. So uh, Kevin, I think you merged before uh, leaving um, the multi-branch pipeline tutorial. So it's it's done. It's 
oh okay it's not mine i should have uh it's directly on jenkins.io my bad documentation tutorials uh where is it up 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 yeah no, sorry further up near the top um near i the think top. it is end to end is to end down. yeah, end to yeah end. because it's so uh, big in order to share it so that other can read that i just don't recognize the page so mm -hmm. yes it's done and it's working thank you all for your help and now I'm working on the main Jenkins installation, thanks to Docker, and hopefully we'll be able to do without Docker in Docker. We'll see. Uh, Mark, two weeks ago, you told us that the Ampere server ran its first job. So it's still working. It hasn't burst into flames yet, right? No, no, it's working great. <laughs> and I used it to do diagnosis of several problems over the course of the last few days where I would run tests in parallel and in it on it and on AMD 64 to uh -huh. check hey is and it's behaving beautifully yeah so um, it'll continue I've got to discuss with the infra team how they want to handle it because we could treat it like a static agent the way we do system 390 as a one-off we could mm -hmm. treat it as a cloud cloud provider uh, we could treat it some other way, uh, and it's up to them what what they would what they would prefer. I just need to discuss the the opportunities it provides for cost savings aren't nearly as great as some of the other cost saving opportunities that the infra team is working on right now. So it's it's not as hot hot a priority for them. Yeah, of course, as their current projects. That's cool, man, guys. Thank you, Mark. Mm. Uh, and, and thanks now... to Ampere. Oh, yes. Thank you a lot. Thanks a lot, uh, Aaron <laughs> and his colleagues for this opportunity. And last one, we were supposed to receive a MIL-5 Pioneer board these days, but unfortunately, the supplier has to deal with an inventory shortage of stock, so we'll have to wait. But that's okay. We still have lots of other things to do. <laughs> Kevin, Mark, anything else to add before we wrap up? Nothing else from me. I'll get out my sign. Okay, thanks a lot, Forks, for your time. The video should be available from 24 to 48 hours. And see you two weeks from now. Bye-bye.